great to you, Lannis. So you reached the stage of your life now that you've got to make very important decisions regarding what you want to do with the rest of your life. For many of you, especially of those that come from disadvantaged backgrounds, it's very, very important that you make sure that you uh, receive a good education so that it allows you to access all these opportunities that will allow you to improve your quality of life for both yourself and your parents. Why UWC uh, when you want to choose dentistry or oral health uh, as a career? Well, UWC is Africa's largest dental school. We have a proud history that goes back 40 years. We are regarded as one of the top dental schools in Africa. And my vision as a new dean here is to make us a global player in teaching, training and research. We have the burden of disease in this province. We have the infrastructure, we have the capacity and we have the support from the university to become global players in teaching, training and research. And it is my vision that in the next five years we'll be achieving some of these goals. The other important thing that you have to uh, recognize is the pace of change in terms of how dentistry is moving. Dentistry, like many, many other professions out there, is becoming very digital and they, we are embracing the latest technologies. So we intend to form international links with the top dental schools around the world to make sure that we are uh, that we are globally competitive but also locally responsive in terms of how we train our students. So when our students qualify, they will be or you will be able to function locally in the context of what's happening in our country where we have uh, a huge gap between those that can afford treatment versus those that can't afford treatment. And you can also play in the International League because we'll give you exposure to the latest techniques out there. So dentistry is one of those careers that promises you uh, immediate financial success, uh, good standing among your peers. Uh, it is one of these highly rated uh, uh, professions. Uh, that will almost instantly guarantee you a better quality of life for both yourself and your uh, family. The other important thing that you've got to understand is it's a very competitive uh, profession. So we have in excess of five, six thousand applications per year for about 70 to 80 places. So the competition is quite high. So it's important that if you want to choose dentistry or if you're considering this as a profession, you really put your head down and you do your best in terms of academic performance and that will get you closer to the pack in terms of whether we select you or not. So I want to wish you well and uh, take care and please consider this university because I think it offers you an excellent opportunity to allow you to get a proper education and uh, contribute to the building of our country. Thank you. Good morning everyone, my name is Sean Kuzain and I am an Administrative Officer at the Dentistry Faculty and I will be giving you an overview of the Bachelor of Dental Surgery program. Today, the Administrator who is responsible for the Bachelor of Dental Surgery program is Mrs. Nuran Benjamin. The Bachelor of Dental Surgery program is a five-year degree and you have one year community service that you need to do after you've completed your degree. It is very competitive to be accepted into the Bachelor of Dental Surgery program. Because of our limited amount of seats and the large volumes of applications that we get, we are forced to do our final selection based on your final grade 12 results. You are welcome to apply with your final grade 11 or your mid-year grade 12 results. For those of you who have not completed an application as yet, you are still welcome to do so, as applications only ends at the end of September this year. You can do an online application via the UWC website. You need to meet the minimum subject requirements when applying for the Bachelor of Dental Surgery. The following subjects are required. English at the minimum level 4, Afrikaans or another second additional language at the minimum level 3, Mathematics at the minimum level 4, Life Sciences at the minimum level 4, and Physical Sciences at the minimum level 4. The Oral Hygiene Program is a three-year professional program which allows you to work with people, 
changing their lives and putting a smile back on their face. In order to meet the minimum requirements to apply for the oral hygiene program, you need to meet our subject requirements. The following subjects are required in order to make your application for oral hygiene. English at a minimum level 4, another second language at a minimum level 3, mathematics at a minimum level 3, or mathematic literacy at a minimum level 4, and life sciences at a minimum level 4. I want to wish all grade 12 learners well while preparing for the final grade 12 examinations. Should you require any other additional information, please contact the faculty. My name is Dr. Khamisaram Poma. I am a specialist as well as a senior lecturer in the Department of Community Oral Health. Um, so in Community Oral Health, we are basically concerned with the community or the population as our patient. So we conduct what we call a community diagnosis through various research methods. And this is where we can establish what um, dental problems that communities or po populations experience so that we can provide uh, interventions accordingly. So we're concerned with reaching uh, optimal oral health uh, for our communities or the populations at large. And this is why we focus more on the promotion of good oral health, um, prevention of the disease. We're concerned with educating the populations and we provide a uh, treatment uh, for, for our services. Okay, so we also teach undergrad students as well as uh, postgrad students. At undergrad students, some of the modules that we teach are prevention or preventive dentistry. We teach what we call measuring health and disease, which is basically epidemiology and research. And we also um, have a two-year program at master's level, which is a two-year master's for postgrad students. And we provide a four-year program for a specialty program. So I'm also the coordinator of outreach programs. And in one year, we conduct five outreach programs. Two of them will be per weekend and then the others will be just a Saturday or one day um, outreach. We try and collaborate with other societies. We try and collaborate with the um, Faculty of Health Sciences from main campus so that we can all work together. And uh, we're also involved with the Pillow Pepper train, which is the health train that goes around the country. And our final year students in dentistry as well as in oral hygiene, they join the train for two week uh, rotation. The reason we do these outreach programs is that uh, we want our students to improve their clinical skills, but more importantly, we want them to be able to work in a community where our patients live so that they can learn the challenges that the patients go through for them to get here, and that can make them you know, better dentists in the future. So I encourage young people to please choose UWC because we are the best and we produce the best. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Jonathan Ziegler and I am a dentist and a clinical teacher at the University of Western Cape's Faculty of Dentistry. Um, I reside in restorative dentistry. Restorative dentistry is basically the department that facilitates, diagnoses and treats caries or holes as we know it. Also we deal with root canal treatments which falls under endodontic department. Uh, and, f and also prosthodontics, which has to do with advanced uh, restorative work like crowns uh, in, that we know in layman's term as caps. Uh, the course itself is a very, very interesting course. The students really enjoy it. Uh, restorative dentistry um, makes basically or nearly the bulk of, of your clinical practice in dentistry. Six out of 10 patients coming to your practice one day will basically need a filling, a root canal, or maybe a cap or a crown. Uh, it's very, very uh, nice, this course. It's a long course, it's about five years, and from the start, you'll be really, really uh, thrown into the deep side. But clinically, um, it's hard work, didactic work is hard work, but at the end of the day, it's a really, really fulfilling uh, um, position that you can find in. Restorative dentistry falls under the department of prosthodontics. 
prosthodontics is an uh, umbrella uh, department, really, which is a specialty uh, of restorative dentistry. So as a, as a student, um, you are an undergraduate student, which is a five-year course. Following the five years, you can continue your studies and do a diploma uh, in either aesthetic dentistry, uh, endodontics, uh, as well as prosthodontics, which is an MSc, actually, or a master's degree. Under the master's program, like as I said, you can do an MSc, which is a clinical uh, master's degree. You can also do a MCHD, which is a specialist course, or you can do an MSc in what we call a thesis research MSc, which is, and all this falls under the postgraduate uh, program. You can also continue by doing a PhD, which is a doctorate in prosthodontics or in restorative dentistry. Hi, good afternoon everybody. My name is Professor Manogri Chetty. I manage a department called Craniofacial Biology. And if you look at the UWC website, you will notice that it includes genetics and forensic odontology. Now, craniofacial biology is a course that bridges um, the discipline of basic sciences to that of the pre or the clinical um, teachings. All the information that you get from our department and our teachings would actually enable you to perform good clinical practice, taking it further. Um, the type of dentistry that we try to teach is evidence-based dentistry. So all the, the clinical practice is informed by research that is actually done in our department and uh, other departments nationally. In terms of the undergrads and postgrads, we teach a subject called oral biology. So you require this at a postgrad and undergrad level. Um, the depth of knowledge that you will acquire is taken right down to a genetic and molecular level. Because you will notice that everything these days is genetic and molecular. We also teach um, tooth morphology and tooth morphology, you would realize that forms the basis of all your education within dentistry. A thorough informed knowledge of tooth development is very important. Um, this aspect of your training is um, enhanced and expanded within our department. And by the time you actually finish, you would have an in-depth knowledge of tooth morphology, which you can then apply to all your clinical disciplines. With regards to um, postgraduate information, all postgrad special uh, um, oh dear, all postgrad what do you call it, Stephen? Specializations. Oh, all postgrad specializations and registrars would have to do a course in our department, and this sets the basis for their specialization. We offer a PhD, an MSc, and PDD in Forensic Odontology, and this is a little discipline where you look at um, trying to identify victims, for example, or in scenarios of mass disasters, um, murders that are unsolvable at times, they might come to you for help. Uh, we are also in the process of developing a PhD and an MSc in Craniofacial Biology. Um, within our department, we have a clinic called the Dental Genetics Clinic, where we see patients that have hereditary conditions or conditions with um, genetic uh, manifestations. And a lot of these patients have craniofacial manifestations, and hence the challenge with regards to their mental management. My name is uh, Dr. Johan Opperman and I'm from the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology. 
The Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology forms a bridge between medicine and dentistry. To become an oral and maxillofacial pathologist, you have to complete five additional years after your undergraduate degree, your BDS. As an oral pathologist, we deal with the diagnosis of oral and perioral diseases, and that includes the oral cavity as well as your salivary glands and your throat. So most of our work comes from the oral and maxillofacial surgeons, as well as the oral medicine specialist and ear, nose and throat specialist. We deal with the biopsies that is taken from diseased tissue and we make the diagnosis based on these logical features that we see. Our department consists of technologists as well as clinical assistants. At reception, um, the specimen is normally received uh, from either the maxillofacial or oral medicine department. Um, the tissue is processed and as a pathologist, my work is to look under the microscope to make a proper diagnosis. That is, if it's a tumor, cancer or is it an infection. Um, our work is quite satisfying as we help patients. We guide um, the surgeons um, before commencing surgery. Part of my work is also um, undergraduate teaching, so I'm involved with the teaching of pathology to both oral hygiene students as well as undergraduate dentistry students. Hi there, I'm Ibran from Maxillofacial and Oral Surgery. We, we are a unique discipline that combines uh, medicine and dentistry in the surgical treatment of conditions of the face, jaws and head and neck regions. Um, it's a very interesting discipline um, that can be studied fi uh, after uh, dentistry. It's a five-year program where uh, we see patients at Khuriskir and Tigerberg hospitals. What makes even further interesting, we rotate through the plastic surgery department, ENT, other reconstructive departments also where we get a lot of experience and skills that we can actually treat patients that have all these uh, reconstructive uh, operations that need to be done by us. What's interesting about maxillofacial and surgery is that a lot of the um, sort of car accidents you see on the road or uh, people, uh, gunshots or is what we do. That's what we treat. So or anything to the head and neck region that, that, that's, that you see on TV is what maxillofacials treat. Um, so that will be quite, quite interesting, I, I, I would think, for, for many of you to see. And that is why it's a very competitive field, because many people want to do it. And um, as I say, I, I hope uh, this inspires you to also follow in, in my footsteps also. Yeah. Good day, uh, new students. Uh, my name is Saeed Ghani. I'm a final year dentistry student. Um, what's happening behind me is teeth are being pulled out. We're in the oral surgery department. And honestly, if you get this far, you will know and you'll learn to love oral surgery. Oral surgery is the best department in this entire clinic. Well, that's in my opinion. Um, yeah, definitely consider doing dentistry. It's amazing. It's tough. It's very tough. But definitely rewarding. Um, yeah. Hi, my name is Dr. Jakob Walters and I'm from the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology. Radiology is a component of science where we treat and diagnose diseases by the use of x-rays and other high energy radiation. Our focus is the diagnostic component where we produce radiographic images which we then evaluate and interpret. We are central to the faculty as all patients pass through here where they would move on to their designated clinic for further treatment. As we receive our patients, administrative work is handled at the reception from where a patient will be seated in the waiting area until instructed to move to a room for imaging by a radiographer or a student. After the required images are obtained and recorded, the images are then sent to our central imaging databases for evaluation by a radiologist, after which a patient will then be instructed to proceed to the designated treatment clinic.
Hello, I am Cesar Galen Grandwe from the Oral Hygiene Department. So the Oral Hygiene Department is committed to cultivating future leaders, clinicians, researchers, and also paving uh, your path to multiple career choices. The Bachelor of Oral Hygiene is a three-year degree. You can further go into a postgraduate diploma and followed by a master's and a PhD possibility. A powerful tool in life is a smile. So consider the Bachelor of Oral Hygiene program to create healthy smiles and also improve oral health. As an oral hygienist, you can enjoy a flexible work schedule and also work in private or public sector. The oral hygiene degree allows for further education and training opportunities, including postgraduate diploma, master's and PhD degrees, which allows for opportunities in research and the academic field. With the advancement of innovative technology and oral hygienists have the opportunity to tap into innovative strategies to lead to prevention of oral diseases through teledentistry for oral health promotion and also consultations. The advances in technology allow for prospects of cosmetic and laser technology. Thank you. Hi, my name is Liema. I'm a third year BOH student at the University of Western Cape. Um, my experience here has been incredible. Um, it's what, the experience here is one of self-growth. You learn so much about yourself and you learn how to communicate with people and how to work with people effectively. So I totally recommend you to come here. Good morning, I'm Anthea Jeffter and I'm the Acting Head of Department of Oral Medicine and Periodontology at the Faculty of Dentistry at the University of the Western Cape. The purpose of this talk this morning is just to introduce you to the clinical discipline of oral medicine and periodontology. There's a two-pronged discipline um, that we are specialising, where oral medicine is the treatment and the diagnosis and treatment of diseases of the soft tissues around the mouth and as well as inside the mouth. And oral medicine is a fascinating career um, because it allows us to interact with other medical disciplines um, within dentistry and also other medical disciplines. So we will work closely with oral pathologists that will help us diagnose um, oral conditions that we biopsy. And we will also work closely with other medical specialists such as dermatologists or internal medicine specialists in the management and the holistic treatment of our patients. Periodontology is a different subset within our speciality, which deals with the health and disease of the tissues that support your teeth in your mouth. So all the tissues that hold your teeth in that position, that is our area of the second area of our speciality. And we treat those diseases and we bring them back to health. And in the event of people that have lost teeth, we also involved with the surgical management of replacement of teeth in a field called surgical implant dentistry, where we build bone to be able to place dental implants. And we also place dental implants and work closely with our prosthodontic colleagues to be able to give people teeth back once they've lost their teeth. Now, in terms of study opportunities within the field of oral medicine and periodontology, it's a basic subject that forms part of the degree when you study to become a dentist. So as a dentist, you will learn how to diagnose um, diseases of the mouth. You will learn how to diagnose diseases around tissues, around the teeth, around implants, and you will learn how to treat some of those diseases up to a non-surgical phase. If you want to take your treatment options further for your patients, that's when you would do postgraduate studies. And postgraduate studies usually happen uh, over a period of four years, but only two years after already being a dentist. So you then can specialize to become a specialist in oral medicine and periodontology and then have a scope of practice that is only within this field of dentistry. Other postgraduate opportunities include postgraduate uh, diplomas in implant dentistry within our department, as well as master's programs that are more research driven. So thesis, master's or PhD programs that are research driven. It's a fascinating um, and very important um, discipline within dentistry. And um, we welcome any questions uh, to our department um, as you may have them.
day to you all. I'm Dr. Carmen Gordon and I'd like to speak to you about orthodontics. So I work in the orthodontic department and um, you might want to ask what is orthodontics all about. Well, that it is that facet of dentistry where we are going to straighten all the skewed teeth. So we normally apply braces when we straighten teeth and braces can come in two forms. Uh, we have fixed braces and we have removable braces. Well, in the undergrad department, we do removable braces, which is something like this. It's something that the patient can remove. And this is what our undergrad students fabricate. They learn all about this and this is what they do for their patients. So with the undergrad module, it spans over uh, two and a half years. It starts in the third year and right up until your final year. So in the third year you will learn all about growth and development of the patient and uh, when you start in the fourth year you start learning about all these wires and all, all the teeth, how to move them and the forces that you have to apply. And so in metric it's very important for you to know lots about physics in order and biology in order for you to understand all the principles uh, that applies to orthodontics when you do come to our department. And uh, in your final year, all the knowledge that you have accumulated, you start applying in your clinics and now you learn how to diagnose the patient, what the problems are, why, why, uh, why the teeth are skew. Maybe it was a habit and so we're going to put something in like this, which is a habit breaker. Maybe it's just one tooth that needs to be moved forward and there's an appliance for every kind of skewed tooth. So um, the undergrad uh, program ends in your fifth year and then you can continue and do postgrad studies. So postgrad in, would involve your postgrad uh, diploma uh, where you can continue with this type of treatment. And um, the only thing is you would now be in your own in clinical environment, in your private practice or in the state clinic and you would come and showcase and go a little bit more in depth about what um, a type of interceptive type of treatment you can do for your patient and then you can also do a master's a master's where you do a mini thesis so if you love research you can come and do that and then last you can do um, your specialist program that is the mchd of course that will do much later after you've gotten a few years of uh, working experience and then you can pick, uh, make application to specialize in orthodontics thank you Good morning everybody, I'm Professor Nari Mohammed from the Department of Pediatric Dentistry. So we cater to children under the age of 12 years, so we do comprehensive treatment for all children from birth right up to the age of 12. So we do treatment in the chair, we, we do fillings, extractions, and we also do um, treatment under general anesthesia and sedation. Um, so we offer quite a comprehensive service for our patients. We also treat um, special needs patients, which is quite unique. Um, because we deal with a lot of autistic and um, patients with cerebral palsy and hospital patients because we're based right next door to the hospital. So the undergraduate program starts in the fourth year of study and we see you in fourth and fifth years of study. Um, and then we've also got postgraduate programs where we, we offer diploma in pediatric dentistry which is over two year, a part of over a two year period. We also have a structured master's program over two years, which is full time. And then if you're that way inclined, we can also offer a PhD in pediatric dentistry. Working in pediatric dentistry can be quite challenging because you must remember we're dealing with children under the age of 12. And oftentimes we do procedures that are not very pleasant. So extra extractions, fillings, and we oftentimes need to give injections. So you need to have a way with kids. You need to be able to convince them um, to accept certain procedures. So if you have a way with children and you enjoy making their lives a little bit better, then pediatric dentistry is the way to go for you. Um, it's about improving the quality of life and especially special need kids. Um, they have a special place in my heart. Uh, kids with medical problems, um, you can really make a difference in, in their lives through pediatric dentistry. Good day, 
I am Dr. Renal Mart. I am heading the prosthodontic department. Uh, we offer two programs within this department. The undergrad program um, is mostly where we replace missing teeth. So for most of the work, it's where we do dentures or, as you might know, false teeth. So it's either when people have lost the teeth, then we restore the, the natural teeth by making complete dentures or maybe partial dentures and that's our undergrad program. Our postgrad program is probably the most exciting that you've seen on the news and TV and clips all about makeovers, smiling, making your white teeth, uh, crowns, bridges, those kind of things. So that is the complete um, scope of prosthodontics. Um, it's quite exciting. I think for us is, is where people are, you're creating new smiles for them. You're restoring their dignity. Um, and um, yeah, it's quite enjoyable. We've got a big staff complement, uh, part-time and full-time staff, and we offer postgraduate program also in research. Uh, that's much later. So um, please come and join us when you're in the facility. Come and have a look and then you'll see everyone with the smiles. That's our department. Thank you. Mm -hmm.